Barikiwa Radio. The Advent Beat. Morning, once again, wherever you are. I hope that God has kept you well and that Lord has led you safely throughout the night. It's another beautiful morning that we want to continue with our series, even as we continue to look at the text, Revelation 14, verses number 6. My name is Brother Edward Mtinda, a fellow servant in the vineyard of God. And we have been looking at this text, of which I believe that all the Bible was written for this final generation. In fact, if you read the, the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses number 11, Paul is saying, Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples. Now that word ensample simply means these things were written as shadows. And in the context of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, Paul is speaking about ancient Israel. And Paul is saying, whatever that took place in their day and age, whatever sins that took place, whatever events, the historical writings and even the teachings that took place in their time, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, now all these things happened unto them for ensamples. Ensamples simply means shadows, types. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Paul is saying that the past is equals to the future, or the past is equals to the present age. And he's so specific by saying whatever that took place in the ancient times was written for the individuals who are living at the end of the world. And this is you and I. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives and even in our Christian walk. And we are so grateful to see that, Lord, you had laid for us a waymark, a chart, and even a compass. Because all these histories that we are studying, these are our histories, and this should become our experience. Where they failed, we should not fail. But where they had victory, Lord, we should embrace that which made them to have victory. And that is the acceptance of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we continue to study about this hill that you had set, so that they may manifest your character upon the world, Lord, teach us and help us to have the same character of Israel. This is our prayer through the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday we ventured in the study of looking at Revelation 14, verse 6, and specifically we were looking at the angel who is flying. And we defined that flying simply means to be raised above the earth. And we looked at a couple of verses and texts. And we saw that Jerusalem was built on a hill. In fact, the Bible says this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses number 1. You see, Israel was supposed to be a fruitful hill. Isaiah chapter 5, verses number 1, the Bible says, Now will I sing to my well-beloved. It is so interesting that when Christ is speaking about his relationship to his church, Christ is saying that his church is the well-beloved. And I want you to see this principle in the Bible, that the church of God at Jerusalem in the midst of the world, God had loved them beyond measure. He had given them infinite love and he had an expectation that they will show the same love towards him. Notice the text again, Isaiah 5.1, Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my well-beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Christ is saying that he had planted a vineyard. And the vineyard was located in a fruitful hill. What is this vineyard? The book of Isaiah, chapter 5. In the same chapter, we read the definition of the vineyard. 5 verses number 7. The Bible says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts 
is the house of Israel. So God is saying he had raised Israel above every other nation. But here Isaiah is very specific by saying that the vineyard was located in a fruitful hill. So the Lord was seeking and was waiting for Israel to bear fruits because it was a fruitful hill. But I want us to read the experience of Israel. Did they bear fruits? Because again, the Bible speaks about Christ coming. Because any man who plants a field at the end of the plantation season, then comes the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, the Lord was to come to Israel to do a close investigation on the trees that were planted, seeking fruits. But the question is, when the Lord cometh to seek fruits, will he find one? Now turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew 21, verses number 19. Remember, we are connecting verses after verses, even in this great chain of truth, as we are seeking to unfold Revelation 14, verse 6. What was the desire of God? His desire was that even before the angel is given the message to preach, God had to locate them somewhere that they will bear fruits, according to Isaiah 5, verse 1, going downwards. Now, in Matthew 21, verse number 19, the Lord of the harvest, the husbandman, because it is the Lord who planted. God can plant. In fact, if you read the book of Genesis 2, verse number 8, the Bible says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the eyes and good for food. So God is one who plants. So God, in that text or in that context, God is a gardener. God is a husbandman. And any husbandman, he is seeking for the time of the harvest. Because in the time of the harvest, he will come with a sickle. In fact, before we read the book of Matthew 21, 19, go with me to the book of Revelation 14. Revelation 14, verses number 14. In the time period when the vegetation will be ready, Christ will come back seeking for the fruits because he planted a vineyard. But the greatest question is, when he cometh back, shall he find fruits? But even before we look at that, I want us to see that Christ will come for a harvest. Revelation 14, 14, the Bible says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Here the Bible identifies that the Son of Man, who is Christ, he shall come with a golden crown. But in his hand he shall be holding a sharp sickle. Now, if you check in the Bible as well as in the agricultural model, a sickle is usually used for harvest. In fact, Revelation 14, 15, the Bible says, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is cup, for the time is come, sorry, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So Christ will come seeking for fruits when the harvest is ripe. But now you go to the book of Matthew 21, verses number 19. The Bible shows that when Christ will come to his vineyard to seek for fruits, Christ had an expectation that Jerusalem will first bear fruits, then other nations. In fact, they were located in the midst of the nation, so that as they continue to populate the earth, the glory of the, of the Lord would extend to the ends of the world. This was the desire of God. As they were located in the midst, as they would populate, they would extend the glory towards the north, the glory towards the south the glory towards the east, the glory towards the west. 
And that is the reason as to why John is saying for the world to be filled with the glory of God. The angel must fly from the midst. The message must begin from the midst. In the midst, Jesus will look for fruits. And that is the reason as to why in Matthew 21, 19, when Jesus came to look for fruits in the garden, he first did a close investigation on the figs because figs were a unique type of tree in their time as well as in our time. Because all trees, they first bear leaves, then they give fruits. But a fig tree is a unique one. It is one tree that when you observe is so exciting because it first brings fruits, then leaves. And fig tree is a symbol of Israel. God was expecting that it will have fruits, but notice what happened. Matthew 21, 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on, 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 thee, on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Here Christ was disappointed. He thought that he would find fruits in the fig tree. The fig tree was a symbol of the nation of Israel. He was seeking for fruits first on Israel. Then he would seek fruits on other nations. But when he came to the fig tree, it was a barren tree. It did not possess fruits, but it had leaves. In fact, if you go to the book of Mark chapter 11, verses number 13, the Bible says, And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. You see, Mark is establishing another principle that Matthew did not mention. That when Christ came to this tree, when he saw leaves in his mind, he knew that the tree had fruits because a fig would give fruits than leaves. So anytime you see leaves in a fig tree, then it means it has already borne fruits. But when he came to that tree, it did not possess fruits, but it had leaves. Now, what does it mean that the fig tree, Israel as a nation, which was raised to be a fruitful hill at this time that is being described in the Bible, did not have fruits but leaves. What does leaves mean? Now you go back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, verses number 1, as we apply the law of first mention. In the Bible, the very first time we see leaves being used is in the days of Adam when God visited them in the garden after they had sinned. We see Adam and Eve being afraid of God. And in fact, Adam is saying, I was afraid because I was naked. And he says that this is the reason as to why he had hidden himself from the Lord. At this point in time, I want you to notice when Adam was hiding, what had Adam done? Now Genesis 3 verses number 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. They entered into disobedience. Verses number 7, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sealed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. This is so interesting, that when they fell into sin, they covered themselves with fig leaves. But in the day of their visitation, they were not ready to meet their maker. In fact, in 3 verse 9, the Bible says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. Now, if you combine 7 and 10, there is a contrast 
because in seven, Adam had covered himself with fig leaves. But in verses 10, Adam is telling God that even though I am clothed, when I saw your glory, when your glory was revealed, I was still naked. So what is Adam saying? To be covered with leaves, but with no fruits, it is to be in a naked condition. So as Adam was covered with leaves, it was a sign of pretension. It was a sign of hypocrisy. He was, he was cheating and lying upon himself that he was covered. But when God did an investigation in him, on him, it was found that Adam was still naked. This was not the desire of God. The desire of God was that when he cometh to the garden, when he cometh to the field which is the world, he was seeking for fruits. And Israel are supposed to bear fruits. And that is the reason as to why they were located in the midst of the world. And the Bible says the angel was flying. It was supposed to be a fruitful hill. May our good Lord help us not to be like ancient Israel, but that we may be trees that bear fruits, so that when the husbandman cometh, he may find something to harvest in our lives. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word. And even as you raised Israel to become a fruitful hill, Lord, help us to bear fruits in our lives. Take the leaves away, because we don't want that sign of pretension that we have leaves, but behind the leaves there's no fruits. Lord, we want to be covered with your court, with your righteousness, and we want to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Be with us. Bless us in the rest of this day. This is our prayer through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Barikiwa Radio. The Advent Beat.